today we're going to talk about Granada, Spain. Granada, residing in the foothills of Sierra Nevada mountains, makes it to the list of the most visited places in Spain. That has medieval architectural wonders and artistic monuments in abundance. The city's name has a quirk associated with it that either came from the Spanish term for pomegranate, since this fruit is found here in abundance, or came from a Moorish term, carnata, meaning the hill of strangers. Moors reigned here for some centuries before the Christians took over, so you will find the architectural mix here from both east and west. To know more about this artistic wonder, let's dig deeper into the top five things that you should do while you're here. Number five, Sierra Nevada. You're here and you feel alive. A vast outbreak of the mountains covering the area of around 850 square kilometers makes this spot the most heavenly to be at in the winter. All you have in sight is the vast plains entirely covered with snow and people swaying on those and feeling alive. If you're ever here, you must try skiing. And the right season to do that is from November until early May. Even if you choose not to ski here, this spot will never disappoint you. An hour drive from Granada, Sierra Nevada provides an ethereal view of the mountains, one that has been fully absorbed with the littleness of the two eyes. Not only that it's home to Spain's highest peak, Mount Mojacan, trekking towards the mountain is not a tough thing to do normally and can be done in a day. And there's refugees available at the summit, even if you want to try to stay overnight. Along with the housing on the highest mountain, it's also a home for Spain's third highest mountain, Valida. So there's a lot of trekking and summoning that can be done while you're there. Not only that, Sierra Nevada possesses a truckload of beauty as well. The Alpajara region of Sierra Nevada makes one sit and ponder about the adroitness of God towards everything that he creates. This village is entirely whitewashed, and the snow just doesn't melt easily during the season. A very beautiful region to roam around and cherish. Just the right spot to have a nice dinner or lunch at, and to enjoy the calmness of the roaring mountains. There's plenty of other things as well that you can do from here, from spotting the different flora and fauna to chasing the sunset while being in the main resort town on a chairlift. This region of Granada is so vast that one has to have a time span of a week to embrace all that it resides with properly. Number four, Alhombra. Alhombra, called the Red Fortress, is called so because the outer walls of the palace are made of rammed earth having the color red. The most notorious palaces of Granada are an amalgam of the Ismalic and Spanish Renaissance architecture and were built many centuries ago. It surely is a prestigious wonder of Moorish architecture, and there's plenty of reasons to go visit this unique palace while you're in Spain. Alhombra was built on the Roman ruins, and that makes it even more interesting because while it was built, Moors didn't seem to care about this fact. The detailing in this palace is confounding and right according to the Moorish style. You will find arabesques and calligraphy on the walls, but the palace didn't seem to hold on to these details for longer because when the Christian rulers came to reign by the end of the 15th century, they built it according to the famous architectural style of that time, and that was Renaissance style. And that makes this palace very complex to look at. It's the fusion of two different worlds, east and west, making a unique style of mudjar. Moors planted the orange trees and roses here. You'd also find elm trees that the Duke of Wellington gifted in the 19th century. You would even find the residence area of the Moorish kings in there, called as Nazareth palaces, along with the residences of their wives and mistresses. It's all very detailed and thoughtful to look at. Moreover, the palace is filled with gardens and fountains, as every palace should, so you can roam around breathing in the same air of the fresh flowers that once the Moorish monarch rulers inhaled. 
there, you'd also find the palace of Carlos V, who, when came into reign in the 16th century, wanted a residence of his own inside the palace. And that shows how ginormous this palace must be. The palace is not just the flowers and rainbows, but it has plenty of iron gates in there that lead to some tunnels that connect the inside world of the palace to the outside of Granada. But that isn't accessible to the public yet, or can't be in the near future, but it's a very consuming thought to get a little knowledge about it as well. The fortress is full of history, knowledge, and painstaking architecture. Number 3. Browsing in Alcaesaria A lot had changed after the reign shift from Moors to Christians. And this great bizarre Morris tradition was one of the things that survived this massive change. Arabs were exclusively given the rights to sell the silk in the 6th century by Byzantine Emperor Justinian. And that's what the name of this bazaar indicates as well, which means the Palace of Caesar. The bazaar has a very fine history because it doesn't look like the way it used to centuries back. That's why it's called Neo-Moorish. A lot has changed with the passage of time. Initially, the bazaar was twice the size it is today, but in the early 19th century, because of a brutal fire, a lot was turned to ashes. The new bazaar was built, and it was the cheaper version of the initial one, where it was being protected with iron gates and well-locked to protect all the goods inside. There was a variety of goods to be sold from silk to spices back in time, but now a little portion of Calais, Alcacera, is left where there's still a lot of exotic and interesting things to buy. There are plenty of stalls that sell Arabic craft work, local painted ceramics, wooden items such as desk boards, chests, and trinkets, and stained glass lamps which are used in bars and tea shops in those streets as decorative items. There's also plenty of other stalls as well that sell the traditional herbs, spices, and Granadino trinkets. So, you're going to find a lot of antique stuff here if you go visit it. And it's always amusing to find a culture poured into some item set to be sold or displayed. Since Bazaar is full of tourists to get a hold of all of this exotic stuff, it also has pickpocketers roaming around as well, so make sure you stay attentive, even when dwelled in all that craft work. Oh, and did we mention that you can see gypsies there who can foresee your future for a price by looking at your palms? You'd also find plenty of tiny shops where you can have your name scripted in Arabic as well. Number 2. Gypsy Neighborhoods in Sacramonte the thing that makes Sacramonte so different from the rest is its authentic gypsy caves. You will find authentic ethnicities merged in here. And not only there can you find your fairy tale dream come true, making it the right spot for weddings as well, because it's surrounded with Nevada mountains that give the majestic sunset views, making it the kind of setting that's just found in fairy tales. Sacramonte in Granada is an authentic gypsy neighborhood in Spain, offering plenty of majestic views and authentic culture. Take a stroll in this neighborhood and you will figure out for yourself that it has its own essence and identity from the way it's built to its 600 inhabitants bearing an individuality in their own distinctive way. You will find particular cave houses here as well, so make sure you hold on tight to your camera so you can make the most of every moment. Here, you can feed your brains with how life was like here and the kind of work people used to do that's still portrayed beautifully. From the Sacramonte Abbey viewpoint, you get to see Alhambra and Valparaiso Valley with a different perspective. From strolls to caves to views, Sacramonte has a lot to offer to a tourist looking for something different. Number 1. Corral del Carbon The construction of Corral del Carbon dates back to 1336, making it the oldest monument in Granada. It was built as a warehouse containing all the goods inside, and also served as a shelter for merchants. But when the Christians took over Granada, 
it was used for stage performances. The architecture traces back to the Middle Eastern architecture model, with very simple building, having an entrance pavilion housing plenty of workshops and galleries, all opening to a square courtyard where open-air performances are now being held. The building, which faced a major ownership shift in the past, is now solely used for a subtle presentation of cultural performances, and also houses a bookstore. Granada itself carries so much history, complex palaces, serene patios, arduous terrains, and precision of the beauty that it all can't be cherished with one visit. But it's also the city that you could keep coming back to and won't be able to get enough of because it has so much to offer and there's so much to see. Now that you're familiar with the beauty of the city, who would you bring along for skiing with you? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, where to next?